Thank you. Now I'd like to recognize a gentleman from uh, New York, Mr. Bowman. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Budell, thank you so much for being here, and thank you uh, for the briefing you provided to us uh, a few weeks ago. Um, fusion ignition, like, wow. Like, the first time in human history this has been done. Uh, like, can we all just take a moment and recognize this? Everyone's up here talking fast and trying to get through questions. I just want to acknowledge how extraordinary this is and just recognize you for your incredible leadership throughout your entire life focusing on this issue. Thank you so much. And when I read about this, I thought I was reading something from a science fiction novel or watching a Marvel movie or something. Can you talk about and summarize for us what this accomplishment could mean specifically for our clean energy future? Yes, thank you very much. And yes, it never gets tired, never gets old to hear people say ignition. Um, so basically what happened in the experiment that we did in December is we used two megajoules, two million joules of laser energy to create over three million joules of fusion energy out of the target. And that's the first time in history that more fusion energy has been produced than the energy required to drive the experiment uh, across any approach to fusion. So that's incredibly important. Uh, we built this facility and we have been on this research path for our national security applications. So that uh, process of developing an igniting target and increasing the yield is critically important to the stockpile stewardship program. In order to begin to think about energy applications, uh, we need to think about some additional challenges. The targets that we use to do these experiments are beautiful, exquisite works of art. Uh, in order for this to be viable as an energy uh, source, we need to be able to make these targets very robust, higher yield, and much simpler to manufacture and produce. We need to move from a system that produces one fusion ignition shot a week uh, to having the capacity to do that repeatedly, uh, ultimately 10 times a second. And we have many of the component technologies that would enable that. Um, but until we had this fundamental building block, we couldn't really begin to move on some of the key questions that stand between what we've done to date and a potential energy application. If we are successful, it is feasible to develop a fusion energy, plat fusion energy power plant based on the inertial fusion energy approach <clears throat> that could be commercially viable. Again, we're making extrapolations based on what we know today. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, and I will say it's not just engineering at this point. There is still physics to be explored and, and to learn from. But that includes you know, advanced laser technologies, uh, tritium management and recycling, um, balance of plant issues, materials for radiation environments, et cetera. If we're successful, Fusion holds the promise of providing baseload scale energy, clean, without many of the long-term uh, waste concerns uh, that have been raised around fission technologies. So it has an abundant fuel source uh, and can work at scale independent of location. So most of the renewable energy is very regional in character. Uh, fusion really is a clean baseload source of energy. That's incredible. It feels like this is a moonshot moment for us and we need a moonshot style national effort to make fusion energy a reality. Do you agree with that? Let's move heaven and earth, all a government approach, private sector, this is our moonshot moment. I agree with that. Um, we have spent 60 years creating this fundamental building block. We will continue to pursue this R&D for our important national security applications, but the prospects for energy are real and they will require a whole of nation private sector, public sector, uh, community-based approach to advancing the science and technology here. And we have demonstrated in the past with efforts like this what we're capable of as a nation when we bring together the best minds, the best technology, the best elements of the private sector and the public sector. Uh, and this is an uh, incredibly exciting challenge. So as I mentioned earlier, students are really energized about the prospects for fusion, maybe pun intended. Um, and so there's, there is a willing uh, body of intellectual capital that's ready to move on this problem if the resources are available to make it move forward. Dr. Drogmeyer, can you add anything to what was just stated? 
I just like to clap. Okay. <laughs> I just think this is... It, it's, Are we allowed to clap in the hearing room? <laughs> I think we should clap. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> I, I, to underscore the point that, that she just made, though, 60 years... That's taking the long haul view, right? That's being patient, investing, investing in something. And now all of a sudden we have this extraordinary thing, not only for our national defense capabilities, but also for the future of our energy. Uh, and that's just, I think, a beautiful, beautiful thing. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you very much. And uh, absolutely, congratulations, Aaron. And that, that information certainly needs to be protected as well as we go forward with that research.